I'll play with it. To call the special meeting at Wednesday, April 18th, 6.30 Enfield yeah, Room, special meeting of the Enfield Town Council. Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Arnold. Here. Councilor Bostell. Here. Councilor Fowler. 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 Okay, item number two, budget discussion. The can I make a comment before we start? It's just a question to Brian, actually. Huh? I know back three months ago or whatever, we had a lot of discussion about how we can control the current year budget. And we threw a lot of ideas out on the table, uh, furlough days, layoffs, and all these mm -hmm. kinds of things. Correct. Have you taken any of that into account in anything in this budget? We have not. We have not. So we had sought direction from leadership with regards to what would be priority areas of focus or uh, what would be um, services or um, aspects of the government's role where we could look for those measures and unfortunately there was not any specific direction provided to us. So uh, we thought it was more appropriate to continue to um, provide for the services that we currently have until such definitive direction was provided. Okay, thank sure. you. Budget discussion, item number two, ROV. I'll turn it over to Lou, right? Or Brian? Sure. Yeah. Um, so just to kind of uh, provide a little context for everyone, uh, traditionally it's been the practice that um, staff comes in and provides a very brief presentation on um, what is different or unique about their budget, and then there's a, a little bit of uh, support information that typically goes along with that. Uh, there was extensive discussion at several levels uh, with members of council about what this year's budget would look like. Uh, and there was uh, a rather uniform opinion that uh, this year's budget would be um, a line item by line item review and evaluation. So rather than uh, put effort into uh, providing for presentations which would summarily be dissected by council, we thought that it was more appropriate for us to be able to just simply speak to uh, what were the more significant changes or what were um, some of the more unique items that are located within a department or within a division's budget, uh, make that more of a conversation piece and allow you to get right into uh, the detailed budget um, to address any questions or concerns that you have. So uh, with that being said, um, tonight we've got uh, Lou with the uh, Registrar Voters Office to review his budget um, and take any questions or concerns that you have uh, with respect to uh, his comments in the detail. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. So it's good, good to be here. I love this time of year, and uh, thank you for having us here. I'm a Lou Fiore, the Democratic Registrar of Voters, and introduced uh, Kelly Wauer, the Republican Registrar of Voters. Kelly, do you have something you um, want to mention really quickly? I have been the deputy for the past four years, and our Registrar, Mark Sheehan, resigned as of March 31st this year, and so as his deputy, I step up as the Registrar. And I have appointed Tom Kinsler as my deputy, and unfortunately, he couldn't make it tonight because he's out of town. I'm also here tonight is uh, Tom Stogai, is the Democratic deputy. And basically, Mark and I, you know, again, not to exclude Kelly at all, but as you can see, this kind of happened over the last, you know, three weeks or so. Mark and I started working on this budget way back, uh, probably in December 1st. So we certainly realized the importance of having a good put-together budget. We reviewed it with both our deputies. Um, if you look at your Munis report, I uh, try to add as much detail in that as possible and allowed in, in that block of, of, of description. Even in some cases, I've actually put mandated means that really, you know, basically by state statute, we have to do some of these things, and this is the cost of it, and it's probably non-negotiable. We did come in uh, under you know, the 1% that was requested from the town manager. We were able to do that. Uh, there's a, a couple items we just will not be doing this year. We will not be doing the electronic poll books any longer. That was a big expense, and since the Secretary of State's not certifying them, as some of you are aware, we had to do those along with the paper checkbooks. Now it's just getting very cumbersome and confusing, leading to some errors on both sides. So we saved that amount of money. And also we've been budgeting uh, about three years back, the Secretary of State, when the state legislator passed a whole new training for all registrars and deputy registrars. And we've been budgeting for two registrar trainings every year. We cut one back. Um, no one could take all those courses in one year anyway, so we cut some of that back. And that was really, the main thrust as to how we were able to get in under the 1%. Other than that, not much else has changed. 
There is one item I'd like to bring to your attention because it does need to be done by council resolution, I was told, is we would like to raise our workers, our poll workers, the people who work 16, 17 hours, who are usually in the retired age, from the minimum wage to $11 an hour. Most municipalities are paying some of those workers $15, $16 an hour, and we're paying them $10 and, John, is it 50 cents or 20 cents is minimum wage? I forget. We would like to raise them to $11 an hour. It's only going to cost us $1,000 more in our budget. We were able to accommodate that and still come in less than what we've requested last year and the year before. But that would have to be done by council resolution after the budget's passed. Other than that, there's really not much change from last year, other than you know, some things we're not going to be doing. We will be having two elections next year. We always budget for two elections. Some years we have two elections, some years we don't. Next year we will. There will be, as you all are sure pretty aware, we will be having August primaries. Both parties most likely will be having primaries in August. And then, of course, we will have the November general election. So we do always budget for two elections. You'll see that here. And we will be expending that. There's just no doubt in my mind there's going to be August primaries this year. That was going to be my question, if you actually budgeted for August. Okay. Yes, we always, we always budget for two. Uh, okay. We always yeah. budget for two. Some years we don't have two. And then once right. left goes, rolls into the general fund. Yep. But, uh, <coughs> certainly this year for sure. We, yeah, we yeah, yeah, I was saying, or you just be coming back to us in the summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. And the other way to do it is not budget for two and then have to go to, yeah. right, yeah. you know, for you guys well, for I transfers. Think, yeah. So, yeah, when we come up short. No. So, no, nobody in a registrar's office will be doing August vacations this year, unfortunately. So, that's kind of really all I had. There's really not much else. I, you know, there's, like I said, the descriptions. I tried to put as much in the munis part. To answer any questions you guys have as you're reading through, um, you know, how many, you know, you know, a lot of detail. I even tried to detail out the office supplies to the best yeah. of my ability. Yeah. You know, it was, I took a good a shot at it. Pretty good. Deputy Mayor Susan. And the District 2 will stay at Enfield Street School? Yes, District 2 is staying in Enfield Street School. As, as sure some of you are aware, um, Dave Wauer and I, and then Mark Sheen and I did actually look at that. We took a couple of tours, and we really, kind of wanted to go to Enfield, Enfield High School. We really did want to move, go there because we wanted to be able to go to a facility where we could have when school was in session. As you notice, a problem in Enfield Street School when we have an election when school is in session. So we really were interested in Enfield Street School and, and the best facility there was the gym. But when you go down to the gym in the back, unfortunately, the 75 foot, there's way too many parking spaces that fall within a 75 foot parameter. And so, how do we police this? So, we going to block off all those parking spaces because you know we can't have paraphernalia, and somebody could have you know, a poster in their car. Yeah. And now they're going to drive into that. And in addition to that, to make that change, would have cost us two thousand dollars because we'd have to mail out a mailer to every single registered voter in District Two. So, based on those two, and plus, that's a district that doesn't handle change as well as some other districts. So, when we looked at those three things, we decided it was in our best interest to stay in Enfield Street School. Uh, once every four years, we have to use the back of Enfield Street School because that's the presidential primary in April. There's school in session. And if there's ever a municipal primary, which we've only had two in the last uh, 24 years, I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, that would be in September. Yeah, I think so. So, um, and actually, the state's looking at possibly changing that law in the future to have that municipal primary date change to August. So, when you look at all that, um, you know, we decided to stay in Enfield Street School. Okay, thank you. Also staying at the annex, the Burmy. Yes, we're we're staying at the municipal annex. Okay, you know, that's changed the name. That's we, we just changed the name. We are using in our pamphlets. We call it municipal, municipal an, town municipal annex dash Fermi. <laughs> we're just doing that dash Fermi for a year or two, so that people get used to the new name, and eventually we'll wipe that off the, the, mm -hmm. the all our paraphernalia too. So we just didn't want to just totally cut over cold turkey on that. <clears throat> Good idea. The other thing I'll mention very quickly is, uh, I don't know if you saw the, the bulletin from the Secretary of State's office, they did receive $5 million. Ah, you just took my question. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, no, Councilman go, Arnie. Well, no, no, please. No, no please, please go ahead. Tell us about the, that grant money. Will that trickle down to us, or is it going to stay up with the state capital? I don't really know yet. We're meeting with the Secretary of State next week, so I don't really, my, my gut feeling is I, at this point in time, I doubt very much, and that's going to trickle down. <laughs> Because, yes. No, no, because really when you look at it, they just replaced our handicap voting machines, what we call the HAVA IBA machines. Yeah. Um, the voting machines are, have been around about 10, 
12 years. They are starting to near end of life, but the Secretary of State is just starting that analysis process now. So, you know, we're looking five, six, eight years down the road for those who are replaced, and they will eventually have to be replaced. So I think my personal opinion, this is just my opinion, she's going to use that money to beef up some of the systems security. that she has, security on our registration system, a few other things. The, um, probably use some of that money maybe because it supposed to have a much more automated field feed from the Department of Motor Vehicles, using that in money to, to, to enhance that maybe a little bit more because, you know, state's looking for money too. So, right. um, But if I hear anything more, I'll definitely pass it on to you. We'll, we're meeting with her next week. Thanks. When, Friday? Thursday or Friday? Friday, Yeah, State. yeah. Oh, you all say? Yes. Thanks. Anyone else have any questions? I have one. Yes. Um, to School Street, where you store all your materials? Yeah, the old Pickens Library. Right. Um, do you have any other alternate place? Should that have a different disposition? Well, we, actually, what we have in Pickens Library, uh, I think, if I can, a little history, because yep. this goes back, again, my friend Councilman Falk and I, when we had nine voting places, mm -hmm. when they first received the equipment, they received enough tabulators and ballot boxes for nine voting districts. So that was th you know, three, that's what, 27. 27 tabulators and 27 ballot boxes. They probably even had an extra, they say 28. And then when they decided to consolidate voting places down to four, they had to, by state law, start giving away some of the tabulators because the state bought those for the town of Enfield. So they gave away about seven or eight of the tabulators, but not the ballot boxes. So what we have in the Pickens Library is just ballot boxes. So if we lost Pickens Library, we would want to keep three or four of those somewhere and probably, again, go out to the ROVs across the state and say, geez, anyone need a ballot box? We have for that some extras. Okay. So I think we could accommodate that. Maybe not, you know, as long as we have some leeway to try no, to do that. It's just good to know, really, you know, they always just say, oh, register voters has stuff in there, and we're like... Yeah, I think, it's, as far as I know, it's just ballot boxes. Okay. And, you know, I probably should actually go down there myself at Doug Finger and take a look, see what else is down there, but do you know of anything else? I don't know. No, I'm pretty sure it's just ballot boxes that are spares for us, and some of them we probably could be giving away at this point. Okay. We can't sell them, but we can give them away. You may want to start on that. Thank you. Oh, sure. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman Fox. Donna, is that the two school yeah. street? That's two school street, yes, Lori. Yeah, around we'll, library, I'm curious, right. where do we keep the regular machines? So where, they sit the schools themselves, or do we have no, them? No, no. The scanners themselves? The we have them in our office. All right. Lockdown. Got it. All right. Lockdown. I was curious on the security on it. They're all locked down. The tab layers are always under our lock and key, under our eyes. They're right in our room. The ballot boxes are kept at the schools. Right. The, the schools provide a closet in each one of the buildings. The HAVA IVA uh, machines that we got last year, year, year and a half ago, Paul Russell was nice enough, I know he was here, to allow us to store those, because those are really computers in the uh, wire closet here. What happened to the old machines we used to pull the lever? Do they... That was before my time. I know that. I know they kept the one. One was over at the Enfield Historical yeah, I was curious um, if we kept right. the museum. Yeah, yeah. the museum. I, I'm pretty sure they, maybe they got some of them still down the pickets. Yeah, they might be in the pickets. So I, I think Suzanne actually knows. Both that time, they did try to sell them. Third world country, something like that. And um, it was Jeff McGonnell's. Wasn't in charge of that. Right. We couldn't find a buyer. Yeah. Just curious, yeah. 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 He got a lot of use, a lot yeah. of years out of those. No I mean, yeah. you know, really, really. Some of us still kind of miss them. Yeah. Well, you know, they don't need I'll, I'll just say it's the first, it was the first report. And I, I like the detail in the EMIS compared to this high level thing. Sorry. And that's not the first one. I think this is much better. Actually, we almost we get to see what you're doing throughout. You know, yeah, all the, the comments are in there, right? Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I tried to be. Yeah. And I, I, at least from my standpoint, when you see mandated, that means by state statute, yep. we, you know, we have to do those. It actually kind of gives you at least a little bit of almost like how your year went, almost, in theory, what your, you know, your... We're, we're pretty, right. yeah, we're, yeah, I mean, the only, the only stuff we have in here is when we don't have a second election. Right. Right. Yeah. So, last question for me. Assuming there's no extra costs, we have a referendum question in November? There's no extra, other than, other than it might elongate out the ballot, which... It's cost for both Suzanne okay. and I. Right. Other than that, there's no extra no extra cost. Right. Other than maybe the cost of the ballot sort of program and the machines because it might elongate right. out the length of the ballot. Okay. Anyone have any other questions? 
Thank you. Well, thank, thank you both. You. Appreciate we're, it. We're open. Any questions, please. You always get a hold of us, email, call, or you know, whatever through Brian, however you want to handle it. Well, you folks do a great job. At the, oh, thank you. The, uh, yeah, we have a calls. Yeah. good team, 65, yeah. 70 people come elections. So, mm -hmm. yeah. again, well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate thank it. Good to see you, everybody. Thank you, Brian. Miss, Miss Suzanne. Hello. How you doing? It's too much money. Get rid of some of that. <laughs> wow. Uh, She's got a lot of fat in her area. Oh, it, there's, there's a lot. But we really tried to cut as much fat as we possibly could this year. Um, unfortunately, we had some things that impacted the town clerk's budget that didn't allow us to really get it down as low as would be good. But again, I don't want to echo Lou and... Kelly too much, but it, it's mandated. What we do mostly in our office is by state statute. Our fees are set by state statute. Um, Brian mentioned that to me today. I mean, we can look at our fees, but we can't raise them unless the legislature lets us do that. So we're kind of locked in there. And our big um, expense this year is, again, the same thing as the registrars are facing. It's going to be the number of elections and the size of the elections we will need to have more ballots, there'll be more advertising, there'll be more mailing um, of absentee ballots. So our, so many of our accounts are affected by these extra productions that we need to um, fulfill these two. Well, I know we will have two primaries, and we will, of course, have the November election. More people will be voting, things like that. So it, it impacts us at all. Another thing that's kind of... Um, added to the expense to run the office is the increase in our land record uh, recordings that pretty much goes back to that sore use fee, the liens and the releases. We've had an enormous amount of liens. They're placed more often than the real estate liens by the, and I do think that's mandated as well. I think they have to do it more often. And we're, we're recording about 400 every time they send them up to us. So. It's quite a bit of extra recordings, and, and that, again, it adds more microfilm, more paper, more storage. Uh, it's, it just is really incredibly different for us right now. But other than that, we've kept our expenses down, and um, I think I'll leave it at that mm -hmm. and let you ask questions that you would like to do. Any questions for, for yeah. uh, um, Councilor Falk? I think the registrar indicated that they had reduced their budget by 1%. Do you know your percentage reduction? No, I don't think it's Brian, a reduction. You know I don't think we quite made a reduction. Um, I don't because um, our issue was a target of the total expense. And mm -hmm. so there were some departments that just did not have an ability to reduce expenditures without significantly impacting. So Suzanne, if I recall correctly, hers was one that was close but not quite. There were others that were able to cut four, five, six percent, and then there were some that had to grow by one or two percent just mm -hmm. strictly from that standpoint. So if I recall correctly, Suzanne did not meet the initial one percent target, but she was close. Zero? Level? No. Uh, no, there was some reduction. I mean, it was probably like 0 0.7, 0 0.8, if I, I were to do the calculation. I promise you next year, with the municipal election, that those accounts <laughs> will go down, and you'll see it. Look for it next year, but this year we just have to accommodate the... Councilor, no. Uh, how's the record storage coming? Uh, Good. Good. Um, it's it's a really Thank good. Pr you mean for for our <coughs> other division? Yeah, he's he's doing a good program. Um, I think he's met with just about every department now. There they have a schedule going. They cycle their records in as they should, and they're you know destroying them with permission from the state, things like that. It it's it evolves and it's it's working well. I think everyone has a lot of trust for him, and that that's a big. It's a big project. Piece, yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? Is this store up in the attic? Yes. There are some things there. There are still things off of the break room. Mm -hmm. um, not not necessarily, you know. Those are more records that are in and out a lot, things like that. Yeah. And that, believe it or not, we've expanded into Fermi as well. I was going to ask that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, we, would, we, could, we could really use a space yeah. in Fermi. Yeah. 
And, 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 and how are things in the vault? I mean, you've been using that the same vault, size vault forever. We have, but um, we've been compact and things like that. Again, we don't keep anything that we don't have to, but we do have to keep a lot in there. I think there's maybe five more years in there. Mm -hmm. I hope. Okay. okay. And we can always expand. Yes. Uh, I, I guess for me it's a hypothetical question mm -hmm. as we all go to electronics. When do you think that you'll be in the cloud? Fully. I mean, the vault would be with no paper. The, the vault would be on maybe unnecessary? a guarded <laughs> access to yeah. a yeah. secure. I, I can't answer that because it's not up to me. It's up to the public records administrator, and they do not want to give up paper quite yet. Okay. Um, and when you talk with them, they say we know, and of course, because you know, all of us are so spoiled by electronic search. Mm -hmm. and yeah. things like that. You know, when we go down to, you know, look through paper and things like that, although it's really, there's something about it mm -hmm. that's <laughs> kind of refreshing. Right. We, we are spoiled by well, yes, massive and, storage of and electronics. We do offer that. If I mean, but unfortunately, because we offer the electronic information, we can't stop yet making everything in a paper. Suzanne, why don't you talk to them just about the challenge that you and I discussed earlier today about having electronic taking records and putting them on, on you know, in, in the cloud in the electronic <coughs> format, mm -hmm. um, you know, about some right. of the issues you're okay. having already. Well, we're very close to being able to record electronically. Right now we do it, people walk in with their, their documents or they mail them to us. But soon we will be accepting from submitters electronic documents and that although we won't see the paper like we do now it will be sent to us through the cloud we still have to make paper on it though but we we are having to we thought we would be ready to go in fact it would have been nice to be able to tell you that we've started but it looks like another two weeks or so are going to go by but it, it's it's been a it's challenge. a challenge for mm -hmm. all paper-based businesses. Yes. And putting yeah. the older records on file, you mm -hmm. want to talk to them about, you know, that's not just a simple... No, it isn't. It's right. it's something that, again, we, we can't even, if we get the older records electronically formatted, because the books are older, they really don't want us to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it is. It's... it's I mean, we can have three sets of the same thing, and that's it. And a lot this. of those, and a lot of those documents contain social security numbers, and so. Oh, I'm sorry. That's no, where yeah, you're that's heading. Fine. No, okay, and so you, you can mean. take that information and you can mm -hmm. put it online and think you are being conscientious with your storage and your ability to produce documents on demand, but then these types of issues come about. So now you're back in the game where do you pay the extra money to buy the electronic software to then go out and search these documents and automatically redact this information? Or do you pull them down and redact that information manually and then load that back up? And so those are problems that Suzanne and her team are running into in an attempt and to consolidate. Thank you. I missed what you were pointing, trying to get me to talk about. But yeah, um, we were close to doing that as well and then found out that all the other town clerks that had their images up online are taking them down for the reasons that Brian mentioned. Well, these are all good things for us to know as a council, but you know, it's, it's not as easy as we all think it should be. It really isn't. Right. Councilor Nell. Going on that, can you just give everybody a, a, an idea of what these documents are, from historical to birth, death uh, records? I mean, people really have no idea what's stored in... in oh, uh, well, in they, the, they go the, back to the founding of the town. They go back to the 1600s, what we have. Um, you, should, you should really drop in and look at some of them. The, the older records are really beautiful. We've had them restored and rebound, and they're very interesting. You have to spend some time with them because they're hard to read and things like that, but they do go back. And, yeah, it's, it's the land records. It's births and deaths and marriages and where people are buried, all kinds of things, yeah. We have, again, these are kind of secure, but we have DD-214s for just about anyone who's served our country. Right. Uh, yeah. so so we keep them on file rights. here in our yeah. office. And your social security, mine is all on my DD-214s. It's not a 
That's why I said they're, they are secure. That's one of the problems, right. A right. lot of that information in the, in the old days that right. had your full Social Security. Right. right. And, and from what I understand, even most people, if they're smart enough, and apparently it's easy to do, you don't mm -hmm. even have... If you have the four digits, yep. you can figure yes. out pretty much what the other digits are. I've heard that it's very easy the to do. Place. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Okay. So they're all um, military records back. For back again. We have them. <coughs> <laughs> World War One. Yeah. Uh, some of them are. It isn't like a DD two fourteen that you think of today. Right, it's just a list of those who those who served who, and where who they served in service and things like that. But DD fifty ones I have at home for my uncles. Okay. Is what they were originally. Some okay. of them. So the arrangement. But those are protected. <laughs> Not everyone can yeah. see them. We have a lot of things that are locked up and people just don't have access to. Yeah. Thank you, Suzanne. Are we are we collecting like so fees, so like dog dog licenses, and I'm assuming fishing licenses as well. And that right. all goes we, to the state. We only get it. We sell for the state with those. We get a dollar for every right. every license we sell. That's all we do. Uh, so roughly, how much do we collect in licenses that go to the state? Maybe if we're lucky, five thousand yeah. dollars. And and the dog licenses are the same way. Most of the fees go to the state. Some come back to the dog fund. But the town right up front gets a dollar. Right. That's right. it for the for the selling. Do they set the rates or do we set the rates? And the state sets the, state the rates. Sets the, yeah, rates. the state gets yeah. the money, man. Yeah. And we do the work. If they're, I guess has that been read? Really, that's been always that way. I actually never knew it. As far as I know, yeah, yeah. that's Isn't that nice. That's what I mean. So, so Brian, just question. I mean, before we go in general, if if to Peter's point, if so, instead we don't, so we don't ask every department. Can we do an analysis on what the impact of savings of furlough days if we go to that so we can start that now so we can have a discussion within you know a period of if it's necessary to be able to have that analysis ready sure i mean we can i mean because i don't want to we don't have that i don't want to put every department head on a you know but. so right so again the the, the information um with respect to furlough days and layoffs um you know those you know, those were costs that we had reviewed and evaluated early on. I'm, I'm going through my notes to see if they're somewhat readily available. So the cost has been calculated. Our issue has been, yeah, our yeah. issue has been our ability to apply them against some kind of, let's call it decision. If you are unwilling to furlough, then the consequence of that is X. If you are unwilling to take layoffs, then the consequence right. of that is Y. And so, you know, we're prepared to execute whatever the will might be of council, but the issue becomes what is the will of council. Right. So, um, you know, with regard to um, anyway, with regard to furlough days, um, so this was five furlough days at the time. So this was um, going through the last six months of the year. If every employee agreed to take one furlough day a month, that was four hundred and eighty thousand dollars over a six-month period. So if we did, you know, one day a month, uh, you're roughly around nine hundred and fifty thousand right. dollars, just short of a million. Yeah. Um, you know, layoffs would be more departmental specific, right. um, based on the direction um, that we were given. Um, by the town council. I can tell you that with respect to, let's see, I think I have the number here. That was the one chart. Um, let's see, I know that we had also run um, layoffs and uh, layoff figures, and I don't have those at my fingertips, but um, we can make that number available. All right, no, or, no, that's why I figured just ask now before we get you know go through this process. And then right. some we ask it, we don't have enough time to go through it. Right. So it's the first day. Might as well get it out there on the table. Right. So. Anything else for Suzanne? No, I, I think we do an outstanding job. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great staff that's there. Yeah. Maybe um, just a suggestion in <laughs> yes. the fall. How about if we have a you know we have a presentation at maybe some of those older records if possible to oh, show that some of that that'd be actually sure. a great thing to show to people mm. town sure. as a, you know as a, as a guest okay, even though you're right. taking the notes but yeah, you can maybe do it it'd be a great presentation I think okay. for the town okay I, sounds, I think it'd be pretty cool to see some nice. of those old rec records okay we'll try to do it. We're going to give you the rest of the night off. Oh, thank you. <laughs> by, by the way, <laughs> sorry. 008. What is that? The percent. 
thank you for letting me know. Sorry, okay. Suzanne, you almost yes. got out. Okay. Council, got out. Councilman Bosco. Birth certificates. Yes, sir. Now, how do they work now? I know back when I first got it, you used to be able to go, I used to be able to go get my birth certificate down at the town hall. Then they changed it because I was born in Massachusetts. That's right. That now we got to go to Mass. That's right. But I know my kids are down here in the town hall. Yes. That your, your, their mother probably lived in Enfield, yep. and they were born in, in Connecticut. If you're born in Connecticut, it'll be at the state, and it will be in the town you're born in and also the town where the mother lived at the time of the birth. Birth certificate doesn't follow them. Let's say you, the mother lived in Enfield, it will be there. If she moves to Rockville, it's not going to be in Rockville. Now, though, the state is offering, I wish I could remember the number of years. It's, it's not many years, but the, the newer years, you can go to different towns. And again, the electronic documents come in. We can get, um, we can issue birth certificates with the different criteria as long as it's in a birth within Connecticut. But the older records, no, they're pretty, they're pretty much housed in two spots. That's it. So you still go to Mass. Oh yeah, I mean that's where my children were born, and I have to go up there too, right? No, there it's it it has to do with being born and in what state you were born in. If you're born in Massachusetts, it's their record, not ours. Thank you. Okay. Did the same thing apply to wedding licenses? Yes. Because yes. if I get it, if somebody gets a license here, they get married somewhere else. The paperwork has to file filed somewhere else, well, well, and then can, they send it to you. You can no longer. You, you have to apply in the town you're going to be married in. So you can't do that anymore. Yeah, they, it was different for a, a short period of time, okay. but it's back to back to that now. You have to go to the town where you're going to get married to get your license. Okay. It'll be in the town of the people who were married if they lived in a different town. Let's say you got married in Summers, yeah. but you lived in Enfield and yeah. another lived in Summers. It'll be in both towns then, but you apply in the town <laughs> where you're going to be married. All right, thank you. Cousin Denny, you had a question? Yeah, yes, well, I've got a question on myself. My, my, birth, my birth records are here. Mm -hmm. I was born in Springfield, Wesson Women. They may be here, but we cannot issue them. At, at no, I, no I, you've issued them to me because I have. I well, well I didn't. Well, somebody, <laughs> yeah. somebody did. So many, they, many. Did my, parents, <laughs> did my parents register the birth certificate here then? No. 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 At one time, because so many births do take place in Springfield, it's right over the line. Correct. Springfield used to send them to us. Oh, that's we kept then. them, yeah. we issued them, and we didn't think a thing of it. And then we were told no. by a certain attorney general oh, okay. in the state of Florida that we were no, no, doing no an illegal so act. I shouldn't lose, so I shouldn't lose a birth certificate. Right. Well, you can, you can get one in Springfield. Oh, yeah, go to Springfield. Well, and yeah, you I may have that. it questioned because that's how we found out about it. There was someone in fake traveling in Florida. They showed their Springfield birth certificate issued by the town of Enfield, Connecticut, and it raised a lot of red flags. And again, we found out that way, so we haven't issued them since. And that was back before I got to be town clerk. Yeah, all right. They had the same thing when I went yeah. through yeah. passport. They said, oh, this is very nice, but you've got to go to Springfield. <laughs> Mine. Thank you, Suzanne. Okay. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Those terrorist things. Watch those. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Russell? Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Mayor, to your question regarding layoffs, um, the estimated calculation for 27 employees would yield roughly $750,000 in savings. That includes uh, uh, unemployment? Yes. Or, yeah. Yes. So it's more money with a day of a furlough savings right. than it is to so you don't pay, pay the unemployment. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. Thank you. Good Appreciate that. Sure. Welcome. Evening. How you doing, sir? Good and yourself. Good to see you. Same here. Um, I'm here to present the IT budget and uh, the overall uh, difference from last year is uh, the current IT budget is $166,345 less than what it was last year. Um, most of that contributing to uh, some of the CIP projects that we completed this year. Uh, what we do as a philosophy is we, we've been migrating a lot of our uh, 
platforms from owning things to service documents and service relationships. Um, because of the how quickly technology becomes obsolete, we do not choose to purchase it, but we've gone over uh, utilizing leases, and that's paid large dividends and uh, reduction of downtime for our, our customers who use technology for practically everything now in their day-to-day -day business. Uh, when we first started that, uh, it was about 10-15% uh, of the uh, of the productivity was done through technology. Now it's closer to 90 to 95%. So as the technology changes, we, we're changing it out every three years, which keeps the technology fresh and also uh, reduces the amount of, of uh, repairs that are, are required for it. So by refreshing the technology, you have less repairs and also more uh, up-to-date tech uh, equipment for people to use. Um, and one of the areas that shows that transition of going from capital expenditures to operational expenditures are network infrastructure as a service. We moved the funding out of our technology equipment line item up into our tech services line item. And you'll see a, about a $260,000 shift in that to uh, relate to the changing in owning equipment to now it's part of a service and it's an ongoing operational expense that we'll, we'll carry throughout. You mean service releasing? Correct. Got it, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Um, some of the other areas of note uh, that uh, we were able to reduce expenses in our uh, telecom area for savings that we made with uh, cutting over to some of better cell phone provider plans, as well as uh, a reduction in the number of lines that we're utilizing uh, for uh, fax and alarms. So as we close locations, some of our, our phone lines have come off. And that was about a $40,000 savings overall, uh, to or $20,000. So that was part of our $40,000 savings just to the IT budget. Um, some of the other areas that uh, of note as well is that we've migrated all of our data that was locally stored to the cloud using uh, Office 365. Again, we were getting ready to have to purchase approximately $600,000 worth of hardware should we have kept that those servers on site and the eight terabytes of information that we had stored, we migrated that off to the cloud and now that's part of our services. So again, saving that capital dollar um, and bringing it into an operational expense overall. Okay. Yeah, yeah go ahead. So, All right. so on, the, on the fax line, so a lot of the faxes have been eliminated, which was a phone line, correct. to a data line, which would go into the copying system. Am I correct? So, correct. So now, and so that's, give a little idea of what, if, you know, that those numbers were. So we were looking at roughly $40 a month per line, and we reduced almost uh, 60 lines. So we're you know, looking at pr approximately $5,000 a year in, in savings. Oh, just that. on phone lines. Yep. And then the date, the uh, Verizon, or, or the, uh, I should say, cell phone. The cell phone uh, plans, we, we looked at uh, providing uh, services with a competitor, Sprint. Sprint. And uh, Verizon was able to come in and match those same costs. So we didn't have to change services or phones for a lot of our uh, our other entities and be able to experience the same amount of savings. Well, I wish they'd match the price for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good deal. Well, the government, uh, the pr government pricing for cell phones is really beneficial. It yeah. also you're not locked into any uh, contracts or rates, and uh, you know it, it's a month to month. And, and then our, our relationship with the schools. How's everything going on the the school side that we share the. The IT very good. Budget. We we did the uh, we did the uh, administrative computers yeah. refresh. That was the first line. We're now just uh, uh, going to approve a lease company for the town refresh, where we'll be uh, replacing all the laptops and uh, computers with state of the art one uh, all in one computers for desktops and laptops with docking stations for mobile managers and people who, who take them off off site. And we'll be bringing in a uh, little over 700 devices that we'll be rolling out through April and May, again, as part of our whole tech refresh program. And then the next group will be the uh, teachers. 
teachers. The teachers. So, so the administrators, so for everybody's uh, the people that weren't here, uh, we had a subcommittee that actually changed the way we did business, the way the school did business. So they would purchase their computers for their administration, their teachers, uh, and uh, a lot of times that would get cut. Correct. And it would be the first thing to get cut when we cut their budget. So they never refreshed. And what were they? They were less than XPs. They still, I don't know if they still had DOSs back then. They, uh, they had uh, seven uh, to eight year machines were the newest on the, when, when the group decided to take take control of that and say, let's refresh that. And so their first refresh was seven to eight years old. And there's still some technologies that are out there that need to be replaced um, uh, for the cur curriculum. But the, again, the teachers will be replacing their machines. Uh, and they, they were refurbed laptops, so they were a couple years old when they got them. So now they're about five years old, and now we're back on a three-year cycle. So the oldest machine will be three years old. So instead of them purchasing, we took it over on our side. Correct. And we leased. Yep. So now uh, we lease the computers to the school department. They saved you guys uh, repair because if they're broken, we replace them. Correct. Uh, just so everybody knows, it was a really good uh, uh, you know, move in the last couple of years to actually change the way we do business and save everybody a lot of money. And, and the best part is that the teachers and the administrators are getting good equipment now. Correct. So thank you for that. Yeah. Well, he answered, I think he answered my question. We're not yeah. buying any more. We're leasing. Yeah, correct. Totally, Printers, right? Copiers, totally. Yeah. That, I yeah. wanted to bring that uh, lease bill. Sorry, I've got it. I'm good, yeah. So go ahead. Right. No, go ahead. Just you lease the copiers. Copiers printers, as well. Ink. Yep. And okay. uh, we th this year, we have some of the old diehard printers that we've removed off of a support contract so that once they fail, we're going to take them off the system and, and have everybody print to a leased MFP that's in the area. Perfect. Yep. Okay. The only devices we buy are the micro devices. That's, yep. Those are the only ones. Right. Yep. Deputy Mayor Susan? Yes. How do you get, do you get good compatibility with your software on your refresh of your? Yes, we, we ensure that all our current software has to be upgradable to the, what right now is going to be the Windows 10 environment. Um, and every one of our vendors have approved our migration to that. And how do you do, how is your migration system when you have to bring on a new piece of equipment? What, I know you've got something set up, but. Yeah, we have a central management solution which images all machines. So as the machines come in, when we have the 400 devices come in, they'll be imaged and released uh, within three days. Uh, whereas it used to take us almost two to three hours per machine to get that up and going. Council Council I, I think I heard you say you're putting a lot of data on the, the cloud, Correct. <clears throat> which is just a server somewhere else. Yep. That and it's see. private, so it's uh, it's under ours. It's not a shared. Okay. Yep. Uh, so you you still have a server, but you're not using it as much. Correct. Okay. Um, there's technology out there in Gaga Land that can break into your computer. So, and your server or whatever, okay. Yeah. So if they have the technology to break into the server you have, can't they do it to the cloud too? They could, but, and again, I think where the, we're not able to afford the security and the requirements to protect our data locally, mm -hmm. whereas the Microsoft Cloud does, and they, they, uh, they're able to protect to the levels of defense, uh, Department of Defense requirements. Greater than what you can. Much greater than what we could do for, you know, under probably seven to eight okay. figures. Is it cheaper to use the cloud than your own server? Much. Much cheaper. And what uh, one of our key benefits of that, and you're asking how do we stay current, uh, the, all the upgrades for the operating systems as well as the, um, the storage <clears throat> is part of the upgrade sequence. So again, it's part of our operational plan to keep current so that as technology advances, we do as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Councilor Bosco. During our austerity or whatever measures we did, yeah. I noticed a, um, a big savings we had. We had extra toner all over the place. And a lot of, a lot of our savings came from toner. Yeah. So my question is, I thought we had a general printer. And if we make everyone use a general printer... How much money will we save in toner and all the other stuff? Because I believe we, I know we have a contract and 
Our toner is free. Right. It just, you know, it's part of the lease of the printer. So um, can we go where we don't have to buy toner? Or if someone really needs something that's sensitive, I, I believe you go in with a card and no one else can see. So what could the savings be if we just used our lease printer instead of having a printer on everyone's machine? Uh, Desktop. So from the technology department, I removed a line item to support those printers that weren't part of our lease program. All the printers that are on our lease program includes the toner. Okay. The expense is outside of that would be paper. That would be departmental related. Right. Now the non-leased machines, the toner, uh, those were departmental related expenses that those could go away once those uh, those printers die. So the support main support contract that we had on those was twenty two thousand dollars that I removed from my budget. Right. So if when that machine either breaks or or stops functioning, it's going to be removed from our okay, network. Well, the inevitable is going to happen. They're going to break and they're going to stop functioning. Correct. So what happens if tomorrow we start the new budget? You know, uh, July first, and there are no printers. So how much money will we save on toner and other stuff? If we just say July 1st, them, them, them extra printers don't work. Right. You have to go back to the the main printer to get your stuff. So can you get me a price on that? Certainly. What it would be if we just shut them down? Yep. Thank you. Awesome. David, Mayor Suzak. I guess I have one thing. What would the cost be to put your our land use boards on our email? Because you've got land use boards that should they get, you know, legal action on them, you're going to be putting an undue burden of FOI on businesses. I've asked this question a number of times. From from a from an Office 365 standpoint, it would be $500 a year per member, okay. and that's what the licensing would be. So basically, it's an expense that's it could grow. You know, you're looking for a couple of thousand dollars for all your land use boards. Okay. You know. And, yeah. Again, and if there's ten, it'd be five thousand dollars a year. People. Ten people. Right. Yeah. yeah ten yeah. people. I mean, that's and that's each land use board is at least ten. Yeah. So, so we're gonna shift. We shift that burden to the other businesses. Well, because everybody gets the email. If you've ever been FOI'd, and you're not using the town email, you're gonna be pulling all your emails. Yeah, I thought, we, I thought we had done that in some of the land use boards. No, it, we never did. I've, I know, Tom, I've asked a number really? of times, and our building committee has, the high school building committee has that's dot org. Maybe that's... Yeah, but none of the land use boards. Why so expensive just for an email? I know. Well, because it's part of the Office 365 package. So. Oh, so you have to, it comes along with Office? Correct. Uh, so you just can't buy an email address is what you're telling me. And not have it part of the Enfield.org. Okay. Really? All right. Yeah. Well, right, and not, so and not have the other us. part of the suite come in. Correct. Well, does it have to be part of the Enfield.org? Yeah, right. For that. Well, to be secure, yes. would it? I think it would have to be, secure, right? yeah. yeah so where, because we, we've, we've uh, you know, provided information on some of the FOIs, and typically what we do is we go through and it searches based upon keywords and inferences. So we we'll do that. Um, and again, part of the Office 365 package is that full archival capability. So the um, it's it's held pretty much forever. Uh, so there's a lot of storage that takes up. And right. again, that's kind of all the background stuff that again replaced our need for when we had our own Exchange server, which is the email, just the email piece that was costing us all, over $150,000 just for the email. We get the entire suite and package for that same price now. So it's like you're using their emails like Outlook. Correct. Right. Right. It's exactly. It is that. Outlook, right? It is. So you have to. Yeah. Wow. So I guess that's that. Thanks. Thank you, Paul. Sure. Two, two mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. Joey kind of took my printer question, but do we? So currently, could do we get? Can we recycle the the old? So the old uh, toner. You know, like the. Isn't there a re sort of a recycling program that goes on? So the lease printers. That is part of that program. Okay, I got they it. they come they. They deliver the toner. They take back their old toner because it's all part of that lease okay, program. Okay, got it. Right. But uh, any of the other ones, if we're buying them from Staples, I believe the department the, the departments are responsible for handling that piece, and I believe they do a recycling recycling process right. for that. And um, 
so if we to Joey's question, if we go to one so one universal printer say by by um, by floor Correct. or whatever by department is that part of what you're looking? I mean, I would like yes. to see that as well. Yeah, yeah. So I think I mean, so, so I know folks don't like to get up to their desk and go grab a printer, but yeah, I think that's actually something we could probably say. And, uh, and again, getting back to what Joey had mentioned yeah. is that I think a few years ago when we did start this, the secure print capabilities weren't weren't intuitive. Right. They were you know very difficult. They were based upon right. individual documents, and you had to remember to do it. But now. The, the uh, printing programs have come certainly a lot further. I know we chatted last year. You you had mentioned that we we do have sort of a certification program, right? That yes. you so I mean that's good for people to understand when it comes to security yep. that we have a actually I'm assuming it's a yearly program, right? It's where people got to certify <laughs> weekly. Right? But I agree, but you know yeah. what I mean. But that's part of the the the, the culture of, of security. It absolutely right. is. And we, we've when we first rolled it out, um, <clears throat> the, we had a. A vulnerability of approximately 26 percent. Right now, our vulnerability rating, and this includes schools, you know, over uh, 2,200 accounts that we test on a regular basis, and we're in between two and three percent now, where the uh, industry average is around 7.9. So we went from being very bad to very good, so and we get a tremendous amount of notifications where people have gotten true. Uh, phishing attempts right. and information sent to us, and we block those sites and uh, yeah. prevent those accesses from anybody in the Enfield.org. So, yeah, you know, I think as we go forward, two things I at least would request. One is when 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 the par goes forward, it'd be great when you folks save some of the you know some of these things you're doing that's saving money, yeah. right? So uh, we've been talking about the budget. I mean, it's all about saving money. How what, how we become more efficient, but it happens every day, sure. right? So that stuff, I think I'd love to see in the par as a request for all. Because I know you, you're not just, okay, we're waiting for your budget, and here's your budget. You're saving, you're trying to save money on a daily basis. And those are things that we can use. Say, look, we're not just, here's your budget, and it stops. Absolutely. We're constantly trying to save money. And yeah. I know you folks are. Yeah. And that would be great to hear. Say, look, here's what we did. We were more efficient. We saved 50000 or even if it's 200 bucks, you saved yep. 200 bucks. Oh, yeah. You know, that's the stuff when you get to this level, you know, when you get to here, it makes this even easier to go through, in my sure. opinion. Because again, it's it's year round, right. you know, and it's the the mentality, and I'm part of that. Do we have, in your opinion, I'm just going to put you in a spot. Do we in our do we have the infrastructure when it comes to uh, technology to be able to look outside of Enfield, to be able to take on other, again, as a revenue stream? Absolutely. So that's as we look forward, we're trying to survive where we're getting constantly cut by state revenue. Yeah. If we look for regionalization, and is there ways services? or d way where we think, hey, look. If, those are things we like to hear from you guys. Hey, look, sure. I think here's doable. You know, those sort of things. I know it's not going to happen tomorrow, yeah. but I mean, I think that's how we stay ahead of getting cut a million dollars every year from the state. Sure. And All if right. we ha I know we have the infrastructure. We do. So then it now, okay, then how do we build on it and how do we present it where we can actually maybe go to a, again, maybe it's just a department. It doesn't have to be another town. Maybe right. it's another department where we can take over there. And we provide we provide uh, additional services for for the five fire departments right, yeah. already. Yeah. Um, we we provide a consulting service to the uh, uh, health department, and they they were in kind of a transition for a couple of years, and now they've got their technology all on, under control, and they're right. they're ma managing that. Out of this process, once we go through, which is going to be some you know, difficult month and a half, the fall that the next step for at least in my opinion is well, okay. Where do we? Where can we start doing things like this? Yeah. Where we can go to other departments. Other maybe maybe it is another town. I don't sure. know. Hey, look, let's start putting some presentations together and some proposals where we can make those presentations in the fall. So as we come here next year, and depending on what happens with the state cutting our budget next year, right. we're already in. We already have that in motion. Yeah. So again, I, I know. Well, those are things will happen when a new town manager comes on. But I like to get into the department heads sure. head that this is something I think we have to start doing. Yeah, and you know, in preparation for a lot of these changes that are coming down, we, I've sent two of our people through uh, Six Sigma black belt. Right, training I was actually just going to ask you that. I'm a yellow belt, by the way. Very good. Yeah, yeah, just Very good. Yeah. So there, you know, and we're we're taking advantage of the lean process improvements in IT, and that's where we've seen a tremendous amount of savings, and we're able to make decisions based upon true facts, where we started noticing that. The delays people were experiencing from down equipment was right. far more expensive than buying new equipment, and well, it, it just it came out and. On that point, we have folks so where, where, I, where I work, where they have the same thing. They're black belts and Six Sigma, and they make a big deal when they make a suggestion that saves money and becomes more efficient. Yeah. 
we need to do the same thing. Sure. We have folks who are flacked on Six Sigma and they're doing some good stuff in this town. Again, no one knows about it, yep. right? And that's I think that's again as we build the presentation and we're getting at where for me personally, this is great, all this detail, but then all the stuff that goes on that again we're saving money because of some of the things, some of the certifications that folks have sure. gotten. Yeah. So it's just a, it's a good thing. It's just a suggestion how yeah, we can absolutely. really how do we right, change the process of <laughs> right. instead of just asking us going line by line, hey, you spent this much money last right. year. You know, why are you spending this much this? No, it's how are we actually gonna grow the budget? Sure. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. Sorry, anyone else? Yep. Yep. Um, worker efficiency. And I have a printer right here. Just walk over and pick it up. Now I'm gonna go down the hall to the universal printer. Hey, who won the Super Bowl? Hey, blah, 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 blah. has any of that been discussed about worker efficiency and the fact that that costs money too? And typically it's not all the ways down. Right. Yeah. The, to that point in particular, which um, is a follow up to one of your suggestions, is the systems that we have, the, the, the regional printers that we have, are largely reflective of the process that they're most used for. So, for instance, the planning department does not have access to a color printer copier. So, when they need to make color copies in print, they come to our system. There are many times when we are trying to put together a council packet that is in direct conflict to a land use board packet, which is also trying to go out at the same time. So, to your point and to your point, Paul and his team will be more than happy to put together the cost analysis of what would it look like to use the regional machines, but recognize that the regional machines are not truly f and, and fully functional for all users who might come onto that system. So for instance, John's copier printer has, it has the ability to copy in color, but that function is turned off to help keep the cost down based on how he and his department use that particular printer. So now all of a sudden, if you bring on uh, across the hall community development, well, they're going to have a need to make color copies. So now that changes the lease parameters and the use of that particular machine. So we'll be able to do that analysis. And yes, I am concerned, to your point, Peter, about efficiency. So for instance, Mike's regional machine is in my office. So coming all the way back from that corner you know, seven, eight, ten times a day, um, you know, maybe an hour, depending upon what he's working on. So those are also concerns that we'll try and address in the response to the question. But that is an issue. Thank you. How's our not? But as we go with this printer, the real saving is a desktop inkjet removal. Right. So we've been you know, very and, successful at getting rid of yeah, those. Those, as, those haven't been in operation for the last four to five years. Right. So, yes, those... those People have noticed the uh, you know the expense savings where it was you know twenty cents a page to less than a penny a page, yeah. so we've done a lot of those. Uh, some of the ones that are around are just these old HP fours that from the nineteen nineties that <laughs> just don't die. Right. <laughs> and so what we're doing is like all right, you know, when that thing eventually needs some new rollers, yeah. we're not replacing them. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to direct it. And getting back to what we've actually had the. A and A copy come out, also CBS, and they actually go and they do walk arounds and actual measurements for distance right. to printer and needs. So that's what we would have them redo, calculate calculate that. So in that essence, where there's a high volume of special needs, they'll have their own MFP associated with them, and then people who don't will be redirected. And again, it's all based upon distance to print. And the amount of print. Yeah, right. we're we're a heavy print uh, organization between our land boards and everything. So it's right. it's a, the efficiency is it's in key. having copiers. It, right. <clears throat> yeah, and it's a lot less expensive. Right. You know, if you if you were to print that document off on a on a laser jet, it, it would be a couple hundred dollars. You print it off on the MFP, and it's right a few and dollars. You, like you said, you've got uh, one land use copying of this, and you've got town manager copying oh, yeah. this. So, you know, we need the machines there, too. So yeah, and you had the oh, schools. We need more machines. Yeah, the right. school. Yeah. <clears throat> Less machines but, on the desks, more machines, 
in the office. office. Right. So he, they're, they're not waiting for the big. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Just so everybody so there are, on the same page with that. Right. So, right. so to well, Councilor well, Suzak's question, there are a few machines that remain on the desk, but these are the machines that are no longer being supported. So when they fail, they fail. There is not revenue available, there's not money available in the budget to replace those machines. Now, they're not ink jets on No, no, they're, they're laser jets. jets. They're right. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're the older laser jets that haven't, jets. Haven't, <laughs> haven't given up their last, right. last print. <laughs> Do you competitively bid the contracts? Are all of them on the same cycle, or how do you? Because how do you? They are. Stagger. They're on or, state contract. They're on state. So we follow. We follow a state contract. Okay. And are all the machines on the same refresh? No. There's. It's usually uh, every. It's a five year. So okay. and it's usually twenty percent every year. Okay. Perfect. So that Thank so you. that we just kind of keep it, not you know so all of them don't get aged at the same time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, at least your, your oldest machine's gonna be five years. Is this coming up on refresh? No, it's an those never I ask refresh. every year, Hank. It's a big <laughs> nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> I got the oldest. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Appreciate Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for the suggestions on this. Uh, I, I think if yep. that's where we can be ahead of the game. Yep. Hello, everybody. Hey, Mike. Hey. Hello. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much. You have the floor. So the Department of Development Services budget was cut by 4.89% last year, uh, going forward, rather. Um, we have taken uh, steps to streamline our operations. Um, one notable way of doing that is to take what had been separate item, line items for office supplies and safety supplies and consolidate those. Um, in the past, our total amount department-wide in every division for office supplies, for example, was close to $9,000. What we did in a brief study was to look at actually how much did we spend on office supplies department-wide, and it was closer to $2,200. So there was, we were able to cut a pretty big chunk of, uh, of money in office supplies by just consolidating and then understanding we have an inventory of all of our office supplies. So we're under a little bit more than the average. Um, you'll see the uh, total there is $2,000. Um, the average was closer to 23 over the last three years. But I think a lot of that was because we were ordering, um, each department was ordering pens. Each department was ordering toner. <laughs> so now we're not doing that anymore. So we hope that we're within that frame. So our fingers are crossed. Um, let's see. Um, there's money in the budget, as there has been in the past, for Thompsonville revitalization. Um, it's a little bit, um, uh, I want to say, I think there's $49,000 in there. Um, that money has been used in the past to hire consultants to help us um, with tasks associated with the redevelopment efforts in Thompsonville. Um, one person that we've had for several years now is the is Lori Rosner. She runs the farmers market and the community gardens for us. Um, we've moved the community gardens back. I mean, the farmers market back to the town green. Um, there was an uptick in numbers last year, which was pretty good for us. So we think that that's working very well. Um, and then we we engaged Chris Casey uh, last uh, July. The intention um, for Chris was to help us with our um, public relations efforts, generally, organizing meetings, getting press releases out. Um, we haven't fully utilized her. She's um, the. We have a budget in there of fourteen thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents for Chris, um, and we've used. Uh, I believe it's close to five thousand total for the year. So we haven't maximized the utility of of what she can do for us, but. Um, Looking forward to next year, the community gardens and the farmer's market, we will continue. Um, and then um, we have a lot more outreach and education efforts uh, coming up. 
all tied to the revitalization of Thompsonville. There's the TOD plan, which will be finished. Roger and his team will be finishing up, changing the ordinance, the regulations, the development uh, regulations in Thompsonville. A lot of this is going to require outreach and public education so that people have a, a, a like a soft, and have some knowledge behind them, not fear. And I think we've been pretty successful. Um, we're trying to, we started early this year, and one of the big things Chris has helped us do is to change the narrative, right? So we've, we find that there's a lot of negativity that surrounds the town. Everyone is saying, you know, this town's, you know, days are over, and Thompsonville is this or that. And we're trying really hard to change that narrative. We're trying to right the ship. So whenever something good happens, we try to get out in front of that story and do press releases. And I think it feels better now. Um, and, but we have a lot more things that are be coming up. Um, we're making great strides with Blight. Um, thanks, Brian. Um, and um, we're putting together those policies and procedures that we hope will make Enfield more business friendly. So if you have specific questions for us, Roger is here to help out. Councilman Bosco? Well, <clears throat> seeing this, I might as well start with you. It really goes on along the, the supply uh, thing. How do we, Brian, buy our supplies right now? Um, are we in like a consortium with the Board of Education? Uh, would it be wise? And, and I, I, I don't know if we're doing it now or not, but to uh, get a vendor and have them be our stocking person so we don't have all this toner and all these supplies sitting in shelves, something that Mike brought up when he wanted an inventory of stuff two years ago. Um, so, you know, get someone in there and have them supply the whole town of Enfield, including the school department, one supplier, a bid, and then this way we don't have to stock as much stuff and we're not buying stuff just because it's on sale. Right. You know, maybe we can get the sale price all year long and have it in their closet instead of ours. So um, this was a, um, an inquiry that we had looked into uh, earlier. And as I recall, the vendors that we're using uh, to buy our particular supplies are already pre-qualified uh, based on um, state bid. Um, or through um, some other cooperative um, process in which they're identified having, you know, previously bid, you know, whatever the price per pen pack or whatever that particular issue is. Um, I think the biggest issue that we've had um, within the organization, um, and to Mike's credit, what he's trying to do is consolidate those supplies. Right, so, in other words, what's happened is, is uh, you know, we've put the money out there and the money's been spent. Now, whether or not it was you know, Christmas in June, and everybody, oh my goodness, we better hurry up and buy 70 cases of paper clips so we get our money back, um, or whether or not it was um, just the fact that money was available and so money was disseminated in the budget. Uh, but to Mike's point, as we continue to draw down the amount of money that's made available, it, be, it effectively requires that uh, not just interdepartmentally amongst divisions, but, you know, interdepartmental throughout the organization that people are communicating. And, um, now it's not uncommon to see emails pop up where, you know, maybe the, the support staff over at EPD is shot out an email looking for this particular toner or they're looking for this particular kind of, um, you know, three ring binder. So we're already starting to see efficiencies there. Um, we can have the discussion again about whether or not it's worthwhile for us to go out and directly bid that service compared to what we're getting off the, the consortium pricing. But um, you know, we are already, so we're not just calling up Staples because Staples is closer because they take our phone call. We're using pre-qualified vendors. Well, I, that, that's really not the point that I was trying to get. It's like I, I go and I stock materials mm -hmm. at, my, at my shop. And the supplier knows when he comes over here and the sandpaper is down about that much, he orders me the sandpaper. So what I don't want to do is have five boxes of sandpaper sitting there because... You know, it's just a waste of money. Right. So that's why I was saying if you had someone that came in and did our inventory, you know, one supplier supplies everybody, and when we run under 
whatever it is, 50 reams of paper, now you bring us up to 50 reams. Mm -hmm. And that way, we don't have a lot of stuff sitting in closets yeah. uh, waiting for someone to call up and say, hey, does anyone have a ream of paper? You know, and we don't run out of it either. Right. So what we're doing is we're doing an inventory every three months. So Christy goes down, checks what everybody's inventory is for right now. Where we'd like to get next year is where we have a single space for those for that inventory. And then we do exactly what you're talking and about. That, and that's what I and, and, and I'm glad because you were the first one and yeah. you're doing exactly what I want to see done. Right. And that's what we're doing. And it was glad and I says, Well, I'll use this to open up the door. Yep. Uh, the segue into the conversations. Everyone should be doing that. And that's why I was saying you get one vendor that that bids it and he comes out there and you know I need fifty reams of paper on that shelf at all times. And then once a week he comes and just makes it to fifty reams and off he is. I think another benefit of that, um, in that what Michael has done is that you had one person in planning, one person in community development, one person in building, and one person in development services. Uh, so you had four different people entering a requisition, entering a purchase order, right. uh, certifying that they, the, the materials was actually received, following up on the bill and paying the bill. And so I think there's going to be free up of time for those people to be doing other things under Michael's right. system. Professional work, right? Not right. the clerical stuff. Right. It's trying to reduce the overlapping and the... Um, the, 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 the duplic uh, duplicity of our, well, our efforts. And that's, um, and, and that's the only way we're going to do it mm -hmm. and, and save money is to be more efficient because we can only cut things so much. Right. Well, thank you. Yeah. Councilor Noah? So you got a huge revenue source in your, your divisions too from permits and um, on the positive end, you, you did the computer system in with now we're online, um, we're online permitting. And just give everybody a little background on how many things your department touches. Um, and again, with paper, like Joe was saying, to a lot of people it may not sound much, but you know, how many committees and, and land use boards are you responsible to that all need agendas, that all need uh, paper? Paper, paper, paper. Um, yeah. It's huge. It is. Huge. Uh, and um, so, directories on signs, I gotta thank you so much. Uh, been doing this now for seven years, and uh, I thought it would never happen. Um, and then pylon signs, the pylon directory signs, and and Roger, you did it in a year, I believe. We've gotten it through. So, I, you know, those are things. Hey, that, and chickens. And well, I didn't want to go there. <laughs> I haven't seen you <laughs> since I, that happened. Let me tell you, because <laughs> we still have no rezoning in Thompsonville, but I got chickens. I got a problem with that. <laughs> so that, that's my. Uh, that's my next thing, too, is I'd like to, again, see some of those uh, uh, more meetings between us mm -hmm. and your P&Z, because that's, you know, that's mm -hmm. under your uh, realm, too. So, again, uh, you know, those are great positive things. Uh, again, I have to say, too, with the, uh, the uh, opera players coming here, that's the spark yeah. um, that hopefully will light the fire. So, again, yeah. uh, I know you guys do a lot of hard work there, and a couple of really good positive things are coming up. So, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, a lot of what you do is um, trying to improve things, so you do studies and what have you. And was, I assume you get grant money to do that? We do. So who, who writes those grants for you? Well, it, it depends. We, we don't have a dedicated grant writer. Mm -hmm. um, Peter did, um, sort of was, was responsible under uh, community development. There's grants that are associated that come down from different departments. So it's sort of what's the source. Mm -hmm. So if there's um, uh, housing and human development money, it, there's a set of sources with that, generally community development block grants. And then there are transportation-related grants. I mean, the, the, the range of grants that are out there is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, but we've, we're, I think we're only, we're only skimming a, a, a tiny piece of it. And that's, getting back to Chris Casey, this is something I think I want Chris to start helping us do is just target these because we had an opportunity to get a grant for Bloomberg Arts and we just we realized we just cannot get it done. Right. Um, it's not that we don't have the information. It's not that we don't 
that, that we don't have the projects. It's not that we don't have the need. It's a question of just organizing and getting the things put together is a huge amount of, of time. So you could be saving the town a lot of money if you had somebody to write these grants. To, I don't you know wouldn't have to be spending general fund money to do it. I, I don't know that we would necessarily be saving money, mm -hmm. but I think that we, we could yeah. be getting some Generated more money. money. We could be generating right. money, right? So when you look at an area like Thompsonville, and this is a good point, we were talking about it earlier, was you know our department um, not only generates revenue from fees and licenses and things like that, but we're also um, <clears throat> the catalyst for development that then helps to build up our um, our tax base. But it's but our department is also looking at ways for us to be um, to generate a higher return on investment, right? So if we revitalize Thompsonville, um, and there's a good example of one acre on Hartford Avenue is a, a, tax, assessed, a tax assessment of $1 million on one acre with very little public infrastructure, this very little streets, right, in that one acre of land because of the compactness versus another section of town in the outlying area where you take that same acre I won't name the location because I don't mean to pre be prejudicial towards any part, but there is an, another subdivision, that same acre in one of the finer subdivisions in, Tons in, in, in Enfield generates just $243,000 worth of tax revenue. So if we're looking at running Thompson or Enfield as a more like a business, then our return on investment is a big deal. And putting our resources towards that is not, it's, it's not just a cost savings, it's a revenue generator right. for us. So. That's that, thanks. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I think you're doing a great job. Uh, first of all, you know, coming in, cutting, you know, from four and a half percent. All right, that, that's number one. Number two, getting back to a grant writer. Um, to help ge uh, generate some some revenue and for development within Thompsonville, um, I'm just wondering if there are, are any retired grant writers that are living in our town that we can give them some incentive to come in and help out and give them some sort of break along the way, not necessarily to pay these people, but uh, possibly give them some sort of break, tax break somewhere <laughs> along the way that you might want to hire. Make it part of the grant. Absolutely. Make it, make it yeah. part, part of the grant. Yeah. Because, yeah. Because, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, yeah. you know if we put that out there, somebody's going to come out and, and, and help out. I think it's a, right. a, a, a good idea. We've yeah. actually been, we've actually gotten a lot of help from volunteers this year. One um, that we've had, that maybe you've seen him ru running around as a, uh, as a graduate a recent graduate student in business. Um, and he's done a lot of legwork for us. Right. Thank God. I mean, he's really helped me do, um, you know, uh, a lot of work on, on my end to sort of dissect the department and how we're operating. And that's been hugely helpful. Volunteers. And <clears throat> there's a new person that stopped in, and she's a graphic artist from, um, uh, you know, she's married to a longtime town resident. But um, she's very interested in, in helping out for free. And that help is all great on the one hand, but it does take staff right. time to then, so right. and, and it has to be part of our priorities. The, the point of really Balance. moving in that direction yeah. is, is obviously the revenue, but it's the right. point of um, when, you do the, when you do these grants, it's yeah. not just about, that's what people are, aware. it's where are you setting your town up for the next development, right? right? Yeah. So we're, right. We, we keep th saying, I wish we could develop this, there's so much happening in the private sector and in the country right now. We're so behind because by the time we catch up, they've already moved to something else. Right. I mean, we have a development in town of, of medical facilities all over the place. We should be the hub of medical development in the northern section of this. And it's yeah. out there. All the mer I mean, the mergers are telling you what's going on in the yeah. marketplace. That's right. And the grants are everywhere. And the Bloomberg, I'm disappointed, but I understand it was a difficult grant. But if a town like Gary, Indiana can get a Bloomberg grant for a million dollars, then Enfield, Connecticut should be getting a Bloomberg grant for a million dollars. That's right. And that's yeah. that's where it has to go. I'm not mad. I'm saying you're right. We need oh, no, to get no, no, there. No. I mean, and that's the that's where we're we're behind the eight ball yeah. because we're still doing things the way we've always done them in Enfield. Right. 
you know, we've always done them the same way, and this is the way we're going to do them. And yeah, we get we do a good job of getting grants, I mean, but there's so much more money out there, well, and the, it's we're just not even it's not even close to the amount of money. So. One of the things that um, Michael led the effort on is. You know, and everybody said at the beginning, like, were we just whistling in the wind was Amazon proposal. And, um, you know, I remember Michael called me on a Thursday afternoon and said, by next Tuesday, we're going to put an Amazon grant together. And we did. Uh, and, you know, everybody pitched in, people from my department, myself, people mm -hmm. from his department, the community development, we put it together. But, okay, we didn't let it sit there because we have a concept for the re-imaging and the mm -hmm. repackaging of the mall. And so we've gone and we've met with the mall people, and we're talking about putting that image, that 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 reuse of the mall, out there as an RFP. Mm -hmm. And we're following up with who actually owns the mall. It's J.P. Morgan Chase. And so the mall is just a management company that reports to our loan servicer in, in Florida, and they don't care right. what goes on there. And so we're trying to get right to J.P. Morgan Chase get and say, here's our concept of what that could be, mm -hmm. rather than sitting back and waiting for like the crazy proposals that come in every day. So I think that's the type of thing that we're working together mm -hmm. on. Where, and on grants, I mean, the more that we're able to like do the types of things that Michael is leading the charge on in terms of allowing our professional staff to do professional work as opposed to the clerical oh, work, stuff then, you know, we we can put these grants together. So Remember, I under, think we're on the right track. understanding, though. So the thing, I wish I had known what was going on at Amazon. Because yeah. you have to understand their corporate culture, yeah. which is why I'm sorry we don't understand in the yeah. town. Yeah. So it's not just about a tax break. No. Oh, Amazon no. is getting into the health department because they want to cure They want to be the organization yeah. that cures cancer. I just want to say one so, other thing. On, I'm just saying, but we're, we're, and a lot of times we're filling these grants out because, again, we're going to save money. Which is great. Or, we're, hey, we're going to give you a huge, like, you saw some of the grant applications yeah. for it. Hey, we're going to give you a tax break for 100 years. And, of course, they want that, but. They don't really right, want exactly. that. Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean. Exactly. It's understanding and, what these organizations right, right. want. And that was kind and of. And stay tuned for a major announcement yeah. on medical. Uh, right. Because I think that's. Medical services. That's, well, that's the Enfield. thing that, again, by having, to your point, your staff, right. where we need to be ahead of the game. Right, exactly. Because, again, we have, and if we are, we will be outpacing Hartford. We'll be outpacing Springfield. Because right. we simply can't just sit here and compete against them. We have to outpace them. Or we're just going to be sucked in to whatever happens in their budget issues. Correct. Right, exactly. I mean, I, I asked for Amazon. I asked Brian and John to give me a billion dollars in tax in incentives, and they both shot me down. So we had to go back and just say, <laughs> what is what is at the core? What is the right. core strength of this place, right. location yeah. and education? Right. Yeah, and I mean, we but got... It, but, it's, but it's to that point. point. Right, but it's, it's, it's that point. point. I mean... But we thought we made a convincing money, argument, the but they didn't the, think the so. The you understand... My defense, I was nice about it. <laughs> and I'm saying that's what we need is a full time or some sort of direction change within your department. So if someone who's actually under again, not only just filling the grants out, right. but also understands what's going on in the marketplace. Exactly. Because right. that's what we don't have that's right exactly now. Exactly right. Because yeah. the marketplace is already changing. That's right. You know, and now you already I mean, you already see, you know, the the, the deal with Sigma is a little bit in trouble right now. Yeah. So I mean, again, we, that's what I'm saying. That's where I think, mm -hmm. and then it's easy for you to develop and service and do all the things you want to do because we're already ahead of the game. Exactly. You know, that's so exactly I, but, right. but my only, well, I got you real quick. I, I, I want to put you, I'm sorry, I want to put you in a spot. I want to hear how we're going to improve the experience of at planning and zoning. I, I, we've talked, but I've heard from way too many people in this town mm -hmm. and outside of town that, again, they come in, the application, I mean, it's taken too long to get through the application process. At some point, you have to look within yourself and say, okay, look, a big organization struggling to have the right paperwork for a meeting. Right. And you can see if it's a person without a lawyer, without an accountant, without, sure. you get that, right? Right. But we're having organizations who pay these people a lot of money to do it, and they're still struggling. Correct. If we're going to grow revenue in this town, we can't continue to have these bumps in the road. Right. And I can tell you personally, I've gotten many complaints. Sure, sure. And it's, we have to improve. Right. And so I don't want I'm to put you in a sure spot, but I'd be hoping that, we're, again, things of yeah. yeah. things we go forward. I was just going to say that I'm not sure that we can address all of those right, issues tonight, but I'm willing to sit down. I'm willing to sit yeah. down and go through the whole system, what we're doing, we'll to take, wanna, and, and I, take I any ideas, suggestions. I want to hear ideas on administrative review. Right. Mm -hmm. We should be doing more administrative reviews. Yeah. I'm sorry. We, we're having small applica applicants take six months to get something that should take three days. Mm. So, so sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 no it's okay. That's okay. 
trust me, I, I, I definitely, I hear it. And so um, we are uh, taking, actually, EDC is, I've broken EDC up into three different subgroups. One is dealing with uh, changing the narrative. So they're, you know, how, what, what, what information can we spread around? Another group is looking at um, initiatives that are coming up, like TIF and TOD, and, and um, sort of field testing, I call them test kitchen. So they're testing out ideas and information. But the third one is, is looking at <clears throat> our development process from the private sector's perspective. Interviews, I've come up with a schedule that if you submit a complete plan, we only accept complete plans, that by this date you have review done right. by this date, et cetera. So, um, and that sub work group in EDC is helping to flesh that out for me. Okay. Um, but I need for my staff to have, to be trusted by by you know the Planning and Zoning Commission, that they're going to do the right thing, right. and that we're going to have a zoning ordinance that is tighter than what we have currently. So there's I've always heard that when I moved back to Connecticut, that people said, well, it's regulations that are killing us. My argument is it's not the regulations. In fact, I think our regulations they are weaker than where, what I had where I came from. What the problem is is the process right. is consistency and clarity right. and that's not Ryder's fault it's not anyone's fault it's how it's the culture and so changing the culture is not easy mm -hmm. um, and that's but but we're a year and a half into this process and you know we're gonna have to write that ship soon because it is a competitive game we are competing with towns and, and other places that don't have the same process as ours and put, put more trust in staff. Yeah. Tomorrow, hopefully, we'll see in Meriden, in Meriden, in their TOD area, no projects in their TOD downtown go to planning and zoning in Meriden, none. Mm. It's all administrative, regardless of the scale, regardless of the use, it's all administrative. The Planning and Zoning Commission in Meriden has said to staff, we want to move these projects forward. Here are the rules that we've agreed to follow. We trust you to do your job. Right. Yeah. And in the TOD grant, uh, there's two two consultants, and right. uh, when uh, Michael and I in, uh, wrote the specs for them, we put in there a review of all our development processes right. and the recommendations, and so that's part of that. So not only is Michael doing it through the Economic Development Commission, the, the planning and zoning is looking at it, but we also have hired an independent consultant to mm -hmm. look at it. Okay. And those things are coming forward. You said Hyatt is looking there, at it? Yes, that's yeah. part of it. And also, if I just could on, market, yep, on marketing, um, as part of the TOD grant that's going on, and by the way, all this stuff is up on our website um, if you want to look at it, but uh, there's a whole marketing component. And so we take your point about zoning is not the answer to Thompsonville. Uh, we, we have to know what the market is and right. so uh, we have we have a whole separate marketing consultant who is doing the marketing and that marketing is is uh, is inter uh, connected with what we're, we're building on zoning mm -hmm. so um, we we think we're on the right way and as I said uh, it's tough in a budget thing but I'm more than willing to work with any committee come before the council discuss anything and sort of so we can get a dialogue going um, on on this whole issue because I think there are things going on and perhaps we don't, haven't had the opportunity to right. you know share them with you. Yeah, uh, that's great. Um, so that's kind of where we are, and, um, and 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 as well from the from that perspective, we are taking properties and we're packaging them. So the marketing team is looking at what parcels that we sh we should assemble or we should package. And then again, this is kind of where I'd like to see Chris go with us or help us, would be to create actually marketing documents <clears throat> that then are shopped around to developers um, that we bring to them. We do <coughs> Here's a parcel of land. Here's this, 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 and this. I would love to get pre-approval done mm -hmm. so that the, a pre-approved plan is approved. Basics, but still. And then um, so that developers, they, they're cutting out their, that <clears throat> part of due diligence that it's usually most frustrating for them. Right. They're having to worry about finance, having to worry about construction, having to worry about this. 
getting through the getting through the approval part is if we can help with that, and that's worth a lot of money to a developer. So we don't even have to write a check for that kind of right. incentive. It's free. Well, yeah. not free. It Do we work with other marketing firms? We don't right now. No, we. Um, you mean to market those particular sites? Any of our mm -hmm. sites, all of our sites. Not yet. No. But we're developing, we want to get ability. to that point want to get yeah. to, okay. where town so properties to are, yep. are like right. that. So it's... So not to put you in a spot, when sure. when will you have the presentation for the TIFF ready? Or what? I know you've been working on it, so I want to give you a chance. We so have been working on spot. it. Yeah. We have the <laughs> final review has been completed by the town attorney. Uh, we've been waiting on them to look at the policy. Okay. So um, the next step was for us to, so the policy is done. So the next step is to do the master plan, which is in development in EDC. So to answer your question, short answer, I'd like to have it done by the end of June. And how, and so how would you like to present? I mean, so as we get to that point, it's, it's got to be more than a 10-minute presentation to the town council. It's going to be a lot longer, yeah. All right, so yeah. I don't just think through that how you'd like to when we get to that point. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Good news. Sorry, go ahead, Tom. And, and that was the news today, too. In, in June, that train is going to be chugging by us. Yeah, June and, uh, 15th. Yes, yeah, June right. 15th. So yeah. I hope we can maybe even go down and, uh, and be a part of the ceremony for it. Um, because if we don't get the 20-somethings uh, to, uh, to want to live here, uh, you know, all this planning we just talked about is moot because we need to have that educated workforce that lives in Enfield that yeah. can refresh us and give Amazons the help yeah, they need. Yeah, absolutely. So, the, and that's what's going to do it. Yeah. Modernization absolutely. on that. Exactly. Uh, transportation. Looking forward Thank to that you. cafe and the river. Looking yep. forward to it. Cafe and the river. Yeah. 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 Uh, to, to your point, Tom, uh, uh, we're going down there tomorrow, 11 o'clock, ribbon cutting, and take a look at the whole area, what they've done, and so on. And so the new train station, yeah, Meriden. Meriden. Meriden yeah. Yeah, 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 we'll be there tomorrow for the room. It's cut. Beautiful. It's a little yeah. bigger than ours. But uh, today, in the quarter meeting, a crowd quarter meeting, it came up that Amazon is building in North Haven at the old Pratt Whitney facility. Yeah. So I would like to know what they got to go there. I don't know if you can find that out or not. Yeah, they have a new. They have a facility in Bloomfield as well. Good. Yeah, that's for the winter. Winter. Yeah, it's a new it's a, it's a, a It's a distribution. Right. It's, it's not the RP in North. In no, 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 no. Yeah. That's just distribution. That's a distribution yeah. facility. But, in North but that's a good question because yeah. it is distribution. Distribution yeah. is what we do yeah. well. We got a, a, the yeah. potential for yeah. that on King Street. I and oh, by the way, they're struggling with their. If you read the latest news, they're struggling with their jump into the healthcare market. I did read that. They don't have the distribution, even though you think they would. So it's very interesting. Yeah, is that what it was that got cut them back? I yeah, saw well, that they, you know, they can't ship. Was they can't apart. ship everything, you know, FedEx or UPS yeah. because of the, the the refrigeration aspect of the drugs and all yeah. those other stuff. You know who is ready for that though? It's Walmart. Yeah, I well, I don't disagree with <laughs> you. Yeah. I don't disagree. Any other questions or uh, again, thank you for. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I want to say thank you because I really wasn't finished when I started yeah. talking to you. Oh, that's okay. Sorry. Uh, I am looking forward to going down to Meriden with you tomorrow great. with Peter. Uh, it's going to be a great day. Yeah. Uh, hope the weather is good, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. And this guy here is pretty smart. And we, have, we have to follow his lead here. All right. We've seen a lot of plans. We've got a lot of uh, foresight as to what, what's happening and, and what can happen. And we can't be hesitant about it. Let's just get it done you got great great plans okay and uh we i'm very you. confident we thank you. i'm keeping close eye on, on all of that thank you for jumping out of bloomberg we'll we'll do it next time that's okay yeah, we've I mean, got we've yeah. got a, we've got a backup you got plan, a good idea for and we it. have an idea yeah. and we have a meeting scheduled for you. may to jump on a different grant and i'm going to get the wheels started and then i'm going to let them drive it by them. themselves appreciate it so so thank you for jumping in yeah. okay yeah Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. Can we leave? You're all set. You can leave. In a week. Unless you want to stay. <laughs> and that's going to be until... So, Brian, do we have anything else you want to go over tonight? They're going to do everything. We don't have anything else um, with respect to presenting on the agenda. Um, I know that this format was a little different, a little more casual than it has been previously. Is there anything that you liked or disliked from the format that we need to change in advance of? How was it different? Well, we had the, the presentation. That, you know, we kind of lectured to you. I guess. No, a bit I, I thought I thought we it actually was a little bit 
more uh, than I thought it was going to be as okay, the way it used to be. Gotcha. I didn't expect this. I actually expected something different. Okay. So you, good, you so didn't get me on the so different. We're, we're delivering good. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We're, oh, no. We're oh, it's fine. So, so before we what, tomorrow night will be no, what and we have show you. Um, tomorrow good. night, 6.30 here. Yep. Um, same bat time, same bat channel. Social services and library. Yeah, so <coughs> the new, the new library. All right, so tomorrow night, um, for your reference, um, come prepared with lots of good discussion. Uh, it's the big uh, reorg tomorrow. So uh, social services, library, and recreation. So Dawn is going to go first, um, and she'll talk to you a little bit about her organization. So she is actually doing um, a reorg within her department, kind of setting up three uh, kind of task areas and, and bringing all those divisions into three focus areas. Um, and then she's obviously spinning off the senior center aspect to what will be library um, in the division of um, senior center and uh, recreational services. So um, Jason and his group will be going last. So. Um, it'll be significantly different from what you've seen before, but it's based on uh, the direction that you've had for, for quite some time. I'm going to have to watch it on ATV. I'm sorry, I have a family commitment tomorrow. Gotcha. I have a we, we, we have uh, a couple problems. Sure. Uh, I'm, yeah, and I won't be here tomorrow either. Uh, with the reorganization now, Actually, the recreation, the, will like Mary Keller be like a supervisor, or are they going to be their... Uh, Positions going to be different, or they're still going to be their department head, so to say. So, in um, the particular, excuse me, uh, in the particular configuration that came out of Jason, uh, out of Jason's uh, collaboration with all of the department heads, including uh, the HR director, is that uh, there will be one department head who, in this instance, we're recommending uh, continue to be Jason. Uh, and then what would happen is Mary Keller would be elevated, if you will, to a deputy director in charge of programming. So she would handle certain programming aspects for both uh, the conventional recreation as well as for seniors. And then um, uh, Katie Worth, who is the deputy librarian, she would continue to function in that capacity um, over the two libraries. And then the trees kind of branch out from there. So, so will the senior center have their own separate so the, or will marry? Yeah, so there is the issue of, so th in this particular instance, Mary would have a general programming oversight. So she would bridge the gap between um, what programs are in what division and programs are in what function, uh, but uh, she would not have direct daily oversight in that building. There would be another person who would be more of, uh, let's call it a, a facility adma uh, administrator or a facility manager. And so Mary would be above those people, right? So that, that would be more that function. At least that's what we've envisioned so, it. And so their job descriptions are going to change? Uh, correct. So these are going to be individuals who have different functions than, than what they have currently. Katie's will change minimally. Uh, uh, Mary's would change much more significantly. Okay. You have the tree, though. The uh, yeah. The traditional tree would yeah. be very helpful. Yes, and you'll get all that information tomorrow. You'll, you'll get all that information tomorrow, and, and Jason will speak to that. So anything for Brian before we adjourn? Thank you. Again, I think this is much better than I like the detail. So sure. I appreciate it. And my apologies, we didn't get that to you sooner, but like I said, no, I understand. We, we were right. yeah. to start, I like so. this one. Yeah. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. So moved by Councilor Muller. Second. Second. Mayor Suzak. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.